we're just on the edge of little village of Glemsford and here next to a little road that's fairly busy is a church of St. Mary uh, somewhere behind these trees little iron gate here keep your dog on a lead right we will Got an old wall, brick and flint, going round. Here we've got a little gate which leads to this footpath, as we can see, because the footpath runs through the churchyard. And here's the church. We'll walk around the footpath first and have a look behind this group of trees. footpath runs down through the churchyard into the valley and a valley in Suffolk is a fairly rare rarity actually but it's a beautiful view the churchyard extends right back there it's very big look at that view as I say, we don't see views like this too often in Suffolk. The churchyard on the side of a hill. There's a better view of the tower and porch. It's fairly new and the aisle extension, partly rendered. Collection of headstones here. One that's got looks like a tree growing out of it. So this is grown right out of this headstone. Another view on this side of the church. New wooden door there. And it looks as if that's had extensive repair work fairly recently. We've got new stonework, new door, mainly new arch, and all the flint work's been repaired. It's all new flint work at the side. And the walls there are rendered. I would suggest it's probably a Victorian rendering. I can't help but remarking on the view, which is so beautiful and so unnatural for Suffolk to see this long, wide vista. It's more like Somerset. Lovely flint work here again. This is, you see this fairly often, but where the flint's been set in with the stone and then little bits of flint used to make this sort of top. It's lovely. A lot of weather though on that stone beneath the window. Looks like some fairly major repair work was done at some stage here beneath this window. The flint would have originally gone across. What's happened here I don't know, but I, I guess this window was added at a later date. Doesn't look all that old actually. Lots of nice flint work up above. And this wall is totally different. This is all mainly round flint. The 
churchyard rolls back down the side of the hill here. So this is the rear of the church and a collection of graves here, perhaps a family. They're beneath the window of the altar. A big cross at the top. There again, that window is either newer or has been repaired. All that work at the top is fairly recent. Stonework is all either new or been replaced. Big window at the side there. That looks like a stained glass one. Most of the gravestones from this area look as if they've been removed, probably put back in the corner here of the churchyard. A marble cross here. A hedge that is used as a Monument on a grave. It's a military grave. In loving memory of devoted wife and mother, Constance, widow of Alexander Harper, 1887 to 1981. And as we come round to the main entrance to the church and the main porch entrance we see the inevitable wheelie bin I don't think I've seen a church yet without one it's got some nice stone decoration here path coming out of this door little wooden door here foot scraper and little stones here. My favourite, the atmospheric. Oh, beautiful graves underneath a tree. And there we are. There's another scene that just, just touches me. How beautiful that is. Nice lamp at the entrance to the church. It's a very smart gravel path coming up to the main entrance. Now this is a very impressive entrance. We've got the three, well we've got the big center cross, ramparts, flint work with stone, three little alcoves, big stone arch and wooden door, double door. Very impressive. We step down into the porch, which has got the usual black and red tiles. This one's got two windows, one each side, plain glass, very tall, very, very tall wooden ceiling and painted walls. Quite plain looking actually, but light, but large. So we find ourselves in another large painted church. We're in one of the extensions at the moment. And immediately to our left is a roll of honor memorial military wise by the look of it.
a very thoughtful section over here for tea making and refreshments because there's three windows here all with plain frosted glass and a heater and the font is just behind the tower very ornate wooden ceiling. We, we look down from the tower end and see the altar with a plain glass window behind it and actually plain glass windows each side. One stained glass by the look of it. Lots of light coming in. Ceiling is, is pitched here unlike some of the churches which have had the flat ceilings like we have in the extensions but we've got three aisles four sections of pews a lot of pews actually carpet here at this end quite a large area here that looks as if they have activities of different sorts perhaps Sunday school maybe that looks like the children there These pews are quite nice. They don't look very old at all, though. These look like mid-20th century. Memorials. Beautiful wooden chest. lovely. Small little organ there. And the side view of what looks like the main church organ. And here we have the pulpit with a magnificent, <laughs> fantastic fire arrangement. And behind it, a message that really everyone should take note of. Love one another. Yeah, if only that was true. We come up some stone steps here and just have a look. This is the pulpit. You can see actually the, the plain walls here. Take away from the grandeur of the church really, it makes it look more villagey. So we walk up to the altar and here there's some lovely, lovely candles and glass. Container. They're beautiful. And a fabulous organ. Look at the pipes on that. I just love those. All painted. Beautiful shape at the top. Actually, it's a shame that the arches here have been painted white. Because if they'd have been picked out as a stone or even in a slightly different colour, this church would be much nicer looking because it is an impressive building. Look at this. We've got all those magnificent windows in that extension. Magnificent windows in that extension, including the stained glass window there. And these beautiful arches. And a lovely window here behind the altar. And yet, the Magnificence of that 
is lost a little in the fact that it's all painted white. Everything's white. It's a shame, really. It's like a little chapel or something behind there. It's a nice monument on the wall. So the organ is set back out of the way. You can see how open this church is, how wide. All the windows, all the light coming in. And as I say, everything painted in white is, gives it a totally different feel to what it would be if it had been decorated a little differently. It's taken away part of the grandeur, I think. So here, this part of the church, we step into the extension. We've got another little chapel area, another altar. Some of the glasses yellowed. And that window there is yellow where the sun's shining through at the moment, giving a yellow light. Adds a bit of atmosphere, which really the church is missing. And only one stained glass window here. All these chairs here. and a candle or an oil lamp in front of it. I think the best way to describe this church is functional. It seems that it's well used and it is functional. But it, it loses out in terms of atmosphere. Here is a war remembrance. Beautiful wooden door, all the carving on it. Got a strap here to, that you can use to pull it close. Well, that's St. Mary's Glemsford, a really magnificent church. Impressive porch, look at it. And I love the little lamp here at the side. I think my only other comment is that the fact that everything is painted white inside the church really does not do justice to it. It could look much better, I think. <laughs>